Hello and welcome to Other Half Gaming. I'm Dan. And I'm Kirsty. And today we're doing you a little bit different to the usual schedule. We're going to be doing our top five games of 2016. It's going to be good. <laughs> I'll start then. So top five for me, personally, this is going on games I've played. There very well may be better games out there, just I've not played them, I've not had the chance to try them. It's been a busy year. So this is based on what I've played. Um, by all means, you can drop in the comments whatever you think is better, and if I get chance, I may get round to it. But as of now, this is what I think. So number five for me is Reigns. Which was quite a good game. I, I quite enjoyed it. It was on mobile and PC. I enjoyed that one too, actually. That was good. So, anyway. It was, it was pretty good because, obviously, it's quite a good game to fill in. You can quite easily pick it up, play a little bit, and um, stop, you know. The only thing that kind of stopped it going much further for me is, oh, by all means, I, I think I have not collected or seen all the cards that are there to be seen. But there's only so many endings you, once you've seen like a handful of endings, that's that's all you kind of get. Yeah, the first five or six times playing through it is quite funny. And then it's like the joke's not funny anymore because you've played it. Exactly. So it, it does kind of wear thin um, on some of the endings. But it's a real nice, easy game to pick up and play. And for that reason, I've picked him as number five is Reigns. Because I really did enjoy it. Um, as you can see, it is on the channel, so if you want to know what it's like, feel free to pop over to the video and you can check it out. With a head-to-head -head on there as well. Oh yeah, where we competed on that one. Dan won. I lost miserably. Although, all the head-to-heads now are drawn up for the end of the year, or beginning of this year. Yep. So we, we start 2017 on an even playing field. For the moment. For the moment. I'm going to win. Okay, so number four, I've got Batman the Telltale series. Now, this game I really did enjoy. Um, I enjoyed it loads. I really love the story. I love the take on, on Batman, or Bruce Wayne himself. I like the choices that you had between uh, picking whether to turn up as Batman, turn up as Bruce Wayne, what kind of character you play him at. You know, you can play him as the Dark Knight sort of Batman, or you can play him more as a light-hearted style of Batman. So you, you can, there's a lot of choice in the game, and that's what Telltale Games does best. There is a lot of choice. you always got that worry of, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing the wrong thing? Which you get with all of their games, they almost like make you worried in picking something. Because you don't know what that's going to do to the rest of your game. That could, you know, send your game on a downhill slope from the beginning, or it might be alright. But the thing that really um, prevented this game for me going up the charts anymore was actually some of the performance issues I had. Um, if you watch my playthrough, you'll see there's lots of um, there's a few graphical problems where um, things you know the animations don't line up properly. And some are really obvious as well. You think they should have picked that up during editing? Mm, yeah. Um, you, the biggest thing that stands out in my mind is the beginning of episode five, uh, City of Light. There's a horrible performance at the very beginning. The very first scene, it's just all real laggy and it struggles to perform. This is obviously on Xbox One, so this is not... I'm not saying it's the case on all platforms, but just Xbox One. Uh, it just performed so badly, I almost walked away um, from the game after playing the first scene of Episode 5. But I, overall, I love the story. I love what they do with their games. I loved Batman. I'm a Batman fan anyway. Which probably does help. But it was just that performance thing that really kind of annoyed me the most. And that's why it's not any higher up the chart than it is. So, number three is Farsis. Okay. It's a, a pretty much... Again, I've covered this on the channel. I really did enjoy this game. It quite, can be quite a frustrating game. It's done on dice rolls, so you've got to repair things. Um, you roll the dice, and depending on how much you get on the dice, depends on if you can repair enough. And you've got to basically get to Mars in a certain amount of turns. Did you actually ever get to Mars? I did get to Mars a couple of times, uh, probably three or four times in the end. But unfortunately, every time I tried to record Farsis, I just could not do it. 
I've heard people say that it's all luck on the dice, and I don't think it is luck. I think there is a strategy to it. I personally have not worked out the strategy to it yet, although I think there are there are people out there that have done that. Uh, I personally haven't worked it out, and when I do, I might be able to do a video of me succeeding. But I've, unfortunately, every time I've recorded, I've just not been able to do it. So they won't be hiring you to man the mission to Mars anytime soon, then? They won't, no. Oh, Definitely not the mission to Mars. That's a relief. <laughs> Um, there's a, there was a lot to the game actually. They, they, in the end, they did bring out an easy mode uh, to bring the difficulty down and make it a bit easier. Is that the one you finished? I did finish on yeah, easy well, mode. Well <laughs> um, there was hard mode and there was I think there was hardcore mode as well, which I'd hate to know what hardcore was like. I didn't even try it. Go grow some balls and try it. Do it. <laughs> Do it. Um, do it, I dare you. They also had they also added in missions which were quite good. They were they added a little bit extra kind of scenario to it, so certain things have happened which either means uh you start off with a lot of damage or particular things happen, like your people are highly stressed from the beginning, or every turn you lose a food and stuff and stuff like that. So they added quite a bit into this game and it wasn't a very expensive game. For the price I was really impressed with this game. How much was it? I think I paid £7 something for it, but I know that they have had a sale recently, and it may still be on sale now, so obviously don't quote me on that price. Uh, and that was when I bought it, and I know I bought it when on, a, I think, a sale weekend anyway. So, um, as I said, I, I have, I, like I said, when I actually play the game, I have a bit of a roleplay background anyway, with uh, Dungeon Dragons, Star Wars, that sort of thing. So this kind of actually appealed to me with the dice rolling and all that sort of stuff. So I quite enjoyed it anyway. But um, I'd have to say I, I, I didn't have a lot of bad things to say about it other than its general difficulty. But overall, I really enjoyed the game. That's why I've put it at number three. What's number two then? Number two is Dishonored 2. Cool. Although it's not finished coming out on the channel, I've played it through. And I have to say, it did improve on the old Dishonored. It definitely brought a different twist to it. You know, you can play as Emily, the new Empress. You've lost your empire or your throne. And you're basically having to work your way back to getting yours rightful position back, basically. And as you know, I've played uh, as I, or as it hasn't finished on the channel. You can see that I'm doing a low chaos walkthrough, and I thought all the non-lethal endings were quite creative endings. Really, you know, it's a bit different to normal kind of hack and slash, got to kill the person that you get with most games these days. And with the development of a new character came new powers so it did definitely improve on the previous game i did really enjoy it cool it looked good when i was watching you play through it there's i, I can't think of anything off the top of my head right now that that i would say i was disappointed with the game to be honest so why is it not number one because number one i've picked number one as doom ah uh, fair enough now doom to be honest I didn't expect a lot from. I didn't expect much of a story. The multiplayer is a multiplayer. It's like any multiplayer, really. There's, you know, there's a few bits that are different to others, but they it pretty much tallies up to the same same old thing for multiplayer. But the campaign itself, let's be honest, Doom is known as a let's kill every demon in sight. Yeah. So it, it didn't. Although I like Doom, it didn't kind of raised me to think that there were going to be big things from Doom. The campaign itself really did surprise me. It's a really good story. Um, well, there is a story to Doom. It's not all story driven. It, there is basically a story to it. And, and I was impressed that it was good as it was. The gore, the blood, the demons, everything that's been upgraded and updated to modern graphics, modern kind of look, and everything. I I was just really impressed with it all, to be honest. They did a really good job. I really enjoyed that game. There, there wasn't a single bit of that game that I did not enjoy. Uh, I really loved that game. Of course, loved the glory kills. You know, can't get any gorier than that. 
you know, with Doom, the gorier, the better, I think, personally. It were quite dramatic. Yeah. Um, um, I, as I said, I can't think of anything bad to say about Doom, personally. I really did enjoy it. So that is my number one, and that is why I've picked it as number one. And I think that's probably why I've got it as number one, because it exceeded what I expected as well. So that's probably why I've picked it as number one. Because some of them lived up to what I had as an expectation. Some of them didn't quite meet it, but this one exceeded what I thought. So personally, I think that's probably something to do with why I think that should be number one. But anyway, enough from me. Now time for Kirsty's top five. Okay, so as you guys know, I've been playing basically mobile games and reviewing mobile games for probably about the last six months on the channel on Mobile Monday. So do check those videos out if you haven't already. So yeah, I'm basically giving you a top five out of the 15 games that I've played. Well, 16 approximately, if you include all the different... Where I've got a couple of two different types of games within the same video. So it's quite a good pool to pick out of. So number five is going to be 2048. It's not much 2048. I know if you guys have seen the video, it's a bit of a puzzle game. You essentially just drag and drop you're dragging numbered blocks along to try and create 2048 as a figure by matching the twos together, then matching the fours together, then the eights together, and so on and so on. So it doesn't sound a lot, but it's just a really like addictive game to play. <laughs> and I have been quite addicted to this game in the past and I have had this on my phone for quite a while. I've also had this game recommended to me by friends. So it is one of those games that it's not a lot, but it's enough for a mobile. It does what a mobile game you want it to do. It can start and stop it as you need to. It's just, you know, I wouldn't put it higher on the list because there are a lot of mobile games with a lot more substance to them. But it's just a nice game. It's just, it's just a good game. Oh, that's good to know. Uh, number four, I'm going to go with Hanabe Party. This was a game we found fairly early on doing the Mobile Mondays. Um, I actually really like it. It's a fireworks game. It's my independent company. It's just a really cute little game. You essentially have fireworks exploding. Oh, with fireworks launching, you have to explode them. Quite inappropriate for this time of year, I think. Yeah, yeah, especially New Year coming yeah. through as it has. So it's just quite nice, just a... It's just colourful, it's just quite a nice little game. It's quite... It's not difficult, it's just a sit there and play type of game. Especially if you've got five minutes to kill on the bus, or you're sat there just not really wanting to do much but you just want to just see pretty colours we are listening to an audiobook or something like that it's just quite a nice game to play I wouldn't again it's rated higher than 2048 because it's got a little bit more substance to it but it's not got it's fairly repetitive you you are going to be doing the same thing all the time apart from maybe you might get different weapons to fire at the fireworks um it's a little bit like the reverse of the old Missile Command, really, because obviously Missile Command on the old, you know, Nintendo and that sort of thing. Obviously, missiles come down, you explode them before they hit the landmarks, where obviously this game is... Firing the other way. Firing the other yeah. way, and you've got to explode them before they disappear off the screen. Yeah, if you hit, if you hit the top, you lose. So, yeah, it can be relatively challenging. Um, something, again, if you definitely got a fairly decent sized screen phone... I definitely recommend giving it a go. Or probably a tablet as well. Or a tablet, it would work really, to be fair, actually, it would work really well on a tablet. Just got a little bit more space. Okay, so number three, I'm going to go for Minion Rush. Well, I know you love that. I've, you've been playing that for months before. This is probably the only game I've ever actually spent real money on. Not in terms of, like, internal. Like, it's one I've downloaded for free and then been persuaded to spend actual money on. It's doing a fairly good job because usually we don't spend anything on mobile games. Yeah, I just don't. I don't like it because I don't get the long-term benefit from my cash. I've earned my, earned my money. I don't really want to spend it on games. If they are, well, proper games, yeah, but don't want to spend it on extra lives or extra stuff normally. But this one, I just couldn't help myself. I just couldn't. <laughs> I needed to. I needed to play the game more, and I couldn't play the game more without buying more lives. So that was. I suppose that's a good sign if it's convinced you to spend money that you wouldn't otherwise have spent. So it's dangerous, but very fun. And it's just very... It is it is actually pretty challenging and they add additional... Because they add different challenges as you go further through the levels. And you're not playing the same 
because I reviewed this on a comparison with Temple Run. With Temple Run, you're running the same course all the time, with, which is why it's not on my top five. Where Minion Rush is a different course, different bosses, different challenges. You've just got that much bigger variety and it's more of a platform game. I suppose it makes it a little less repetitive then, doesn't it? Oh god, so less repetitive and you can literally be there for hours just playing this game. And again, I'm running this on a Samsung 7 and I've played it a lot on a Samsung 5 as well. And it's just a really nice size phone. If you've got that kind of size iPhone, Samsung type phone, it's a really good size phone to play this game on. I wouldn't want to play this on a tablet in comparison. You just, I think it would be too big. Oh really? So you're saying uh, bigger screen's not always better for this one? No, because of the way you've got to be able to flick it sideways and upwards. I think you've got more dexterity using with your thumb if you're not having to hold onto such a big screen. Oh, that's fair enough. That's not the usual thing that you usually come out with for these no. games. No, but if, Minion, I, if you haven't had a go at Minion Rush, please go play it. It's so cool. Or if you've got kids that really like tab mobile games, also good. Just keep them away from the purchasing. Okay, so number two, Minecraft. That doesn't surprise me at all. You are a Minecraft fan. I really like Minecraft. I love, I've got Minecraft, I love, I don't play it as often as I'd like to, but it's when I do play it, I'm on there for quite a few hours. <laughs> and it's just really nice. The pocket version on your phone is really quite cute. And it's nice, they've just recently upgraded the game, so now you can actually link it with your Xbox One. Which I haven't done, but I quite like having a, I just like having the separate worlds personally, but if you wanted to, you could actually link it with your Xbox or Live one as well. Which would be quite cool if you're working on quite a big project. Yeah, yeah, that means obviously you'll be able to continue your project wherever you go, which, you, yeah, I can see that being a, a big appeal to large projects. It's just, it's just, a, it's, the app works really well, it's really, it's really intuitive, it doesn't really cause any problems, you can, if you're not, I've played it quite a lot on long car journeys, because it's just a good way of killing time. Well, I've, um, I've seen you playing it and I was quite surprised how easy it was to pick up the controls in comparison to, you know, I know you play it a lot on the yeah. Xbox and it was quite surprising how easy you found playing the pocket version. Yeah, very, very intuitive, I was quite surprised. Okay, number number one, this year's big game, well last year's big game, Pokemon Go. I know this is really, I like everyone says this, but it's just such a good game. I know it's it's just, everyone's playing it, everyone's, it's something everyone's doing, but for me, I mean I've been, I'm now nine months pregnant, <laughs> just about to drop, and I'm still finding it's a game I can really enjoy, because of the fact it's stop, start, stop, start. You can just literally wander around and play it. We've been out to a really nice local park near us today playing it. And just it's just a really re nice relaxing game. You get out and have walks that you wouldn't have normally. Get out and do stuff that you wouldn't necessarily do normally. And it's just a really good little game. Especially now they've upgraded it and updated it. It's crashing a lot less. It's a lot easier to play. The only thing now you get, and you're getting a lot more incubators popping up now. Which make hatching eggs a lot easier. <laughs> I just I just find it a really nice game to play. Over I was gonna say over Christmas and that they made it a lot easier to catch some of the starters, didn't they? Oh yeah, that's been really good because I li I was literally finding naff all starter Pokemon, but suddenly I'm I almost I'm almost evolved my Charmander now. Bulbasaur I've suddenly almost nearly evolved, whereas I was, I was nowhere close before. Caught another couple of Squirtles, and the the events they've started doing are making it really cool because you get to. It varies the game up a little bit more, so where you feel like you're stagnating a little bit sometimes on this, which I think is where it's had a lot more bad press, you suddenly don't have that problem because you can just play it. You can because you, you can just start playing things, and it's just a lot easier to play. So from what you've said, basically they had a bit. They, it seems like from what I've heard, they had a bit of a rocky start, and they've kind of sorted their act out now. Yeah, they've definitely sorted their act out now. It's and the nice thing is because they do keep upgrading it, and now they've started adding in the Gen Two with some of the egg hatching, which I haven't had any egg hatches yet on Gen Two Pokemon, which is really annoying. But it does it definitely upgrades the game. It keeps the game fresh. It keeps it new, and it stops you getting bored of it. And it, I mean, I'm nowhere near collecting all the Pokemon yet for Gen One because I just haven't been able to get out as much as I'd like to. But it keeps it from it stops it from stagnating. It does stop you from getting bored of it. Which I think a lot of people were finding because they were getting through the first gen so quickly. I think people were starting to get bored of it because they just it was just getting really repetitive. I think that's a big problem in mobile games generally is that 
Um, they don't continue to improve. They just kind of put this game out and they leave it. They might improve it if there's bugs, but other than that, generally they stay as they are. There's not many games. There are some games, don't get me wrong. There's not many games out there that they continue to change and upgrade quite like they have done with Pokemon Go. Yeah, I agree, and that's probably where Minecraft works really well as well, because Minecraft also has the upgrade facility, mm. and it just and it does change, and it does grow, and it does get better. And I think mobile games that do that tend to, will tend to have a longer lifespan, I think, than others. And let's be honest, if they're only just getting around to bringing out Gen 2, Pokemon Go has a potential to have a long, long life. Yeah, I've seen some very, very excellent memes of geeks getting, it's a secret way of making geeks like us, I, d I do count myself a lot as geek here, so no offence to anybody. But just secretly making us stronger and fitter. And eventually we'll rule, rule the world because we'll be smart and strong. <laughs> okay, so there you have it. We have my top five of 2016 and you have Kirsty's top five of Mobile Monday. Yep, you do. So, thank you for watching. As I said, that is just of what we've played. If you think there's any others that you think are better, Drop it in the comment and I'll try to get around to playing it myself. Or I'll give it a go. <laughs> and obviously then we can actually, we may even readjust stuff and uh, maybe include it into videos later on. So, hope you like this video. Please like, share, comment and subscribe. And thank you for spending 2016 with us. Thanks guys. And thank you and good night. Bye.